In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the use of the SQL Data Reader. The Data Reader is a fire hose method of accessing data that's returned from a data command. The reason it's called fire hose is because you can only go one direction and it's very quick. The data comes out, you can retrieve one row at a time, but you can never go back to a previous row of data. If you need to sort through the data, then you need to save that data off into another um, structure such as an array or a collection, or you might want to put it into a data set, which we'll talk about in a future video. But the data reader is great whenever you want to populate lists or combo boxes uh, of information. So what I've done is create a small application to illustrate the power of the data reader. Here we've got four buttons that illustrate different uh, facets of the data reader, how to actually fill up the data reader and then use the data reader to, to populate this list box here. So we're using the employees table from the pubs database that comes with SQL Server 2000. The first thing that we do in this button one click event is to actually um, just do a select star from employee data command will retrieve the information into a data reader using the execute reader method of the command. And then we'll call the dr.read, so our data reader.read method. And we'll loop that a number of times. Every time the read method is called, um, the pointer in the data reader moves on to the next record. Whenever the data reader is opened, it is not on a current record. It's actually at the beginning of the file. And in order to read the first record, you have to use the read statement first. If we were to take this line of code that actually references uh, the dr.f name uh, and drl name properties, if we put that before we call drread, then our application would break. So it's important to remember the read function. So what we're doing is simply looping through our data reader and taking the information out of the first name and the last name of each of the rows and putting them into the LST employees um, list control that we have on our form. So let's go ahead and start that by selecting run. And after a moment, our application pops up. We click the list employees button. And after a moment, our list box is populated with all the first names and last names of our employees. Great. Now we want to use a slightly different technique to display the use of the read method. We've already talked about the importance of the read method in getting to the first record, but we can also use it to get to all subsequent records. In this case, after we've actually executed the execute reader, we're going to call the read statement and then pop up in a message box that gives us the first name and the last name. And then we're going to call the read statement again, which moves the pointer for the rows down one more. So we're looking at the next row of data to display another message box with the information. Now this example does one other thing. It uses the get value function with a actual uh, column uh, item ID instead of using the name. This is slightly faster way of accessing the data than this approach of accessing the data. But we'll see in a, an example in a moment that this is even slower than one other method. So let's go ahead and run our application just to get two values and pop them open in a message box. In this case, we'll click the display the first two. When we do that, our first employee pops open and then our second employee pops open. So we can use the read statement to move from line to line within our, our data reader. That moves us on to our third use by using the get type methods. We talked about a faster way than the get value statement to actually access the data, and that is to use uh, specific get data types methods of the data reader to retrieve values. This allows the data reader to do a little less thinking whenever it has to grab the data from the data source and display it. 
So what we've done here is we've used the get string, the get in 16, and the get date time. And there's many more for currency, for uh, different uh, types of uh, numeric values that we can use. And this is a time savings whenever we have a lot of uh, values we want to pull from a data reader. This is the preferred approach by using the get and whatever the name of the, the, the data type is. Notice also that we're using the column ID and we're not using a friendly name. So let's go ahead and run this, uh, this application again and we'll choose the third option this time. The use get type methods and after a moment we can see various pieces of information from him, including his first name, last name, the date he was hired, and his job ID. And that's it. So the last example that we have is getting type information. So we can actually pull information about a particular column's data types. What we do, first of all, is use the get ordinal um, method of the data reader to, s to find out what column number or column ID the last name field is in. So before we just assumed that it was number three, but that might not be a fair assumption. We don't want to hard code those values in, so we can do an initial lookup to see uh, what is the ID that we want to deal with when we're dealing with last names. And then we'll use the get data type name and pass in the column that was retrieved from the get ordinal method in order to get the data type and then we'll use the get field type to retrieve the data type. Now, what is the difference between get data type name and get field type? Well, this is the data type that comes from SQL Server, and this is the type that's used in .NET. So we want to see what is what does SQL Server call a string versus what does a .NET call a string. So let's go ahead and run this. and we'll select the Type Info button, and when we do, it pops open. The L name column is 3. The database type is varchar, which converts to system.string. So the data reader allows us to look at a lot of information about the columns that it has retrieved from the database, and we can learn a lot um, by just querying the different properties and methods. So let's recap. The data reader is a quick way to retrieve information from a database. It's quick because it's forward only. It doesn't allow us to scroll backwards and forwards. Therefore, it doesn't have to keep a pointer, a sophisticated pointer that knows where to go previous and where to go next. And we noted that whenever we get the data back from the command that it is at the beginning of the file, we must call the read method in order to retrieve the very first row of data. We can also use the read method to retrieve any subsequent rows of data from the data reader. We also talked about ways to retrieve the data from the data reader, such as by just naming it the column name within the data reader, such as this. A more preferred method than that would be to actually use the get value statement. And yet even a more preferred approach would be to actually use one of the get type methods, such as get string, to retrieve uh, the value from the data reader. And then finally we talked about some ways that we can actually retrieve values dynamically such as the get ordinal method which says here's my column name, tell me what is the column ID and then you can use that column ID and subsequent calls and methods to the data reader. We can also find out the data type that is used within the data reader from the data provider and then what is the data type that's used internally within .NET. So I hope that this was beneficial, you learned a little bit more about the data reader, and that uh, you'll look to the data reader first as the way of grabbing data out of, out of the database before you use the, um, uh, the data set. The data set has a whole different purpose than the data reader, and we'll talk about that in a future video. But thank you very much, and we hope you